All right, time for another video. I was just looking on my channel and I see that uh, my last video is approaching 10 views. So I just thought, man, the fans need another video. So here we go. This is the back of our new house. <clears throat> I don't know if I showed that in the last video or not. I don't believe that retaining wall was built yet either. Two former students built these two retaining walls with the stairs there. Eventually I will have some stepping stones going up to that from from up by my truck there right down to the steps which will lead to here which will eventually be a fire pit here I'm standing amongst my uh, new trees my orchard I guess and I think I talked in the last video just a little bit about how I'm putting one tomato in each cage cages here because lots of deer and they've put for the most part they've left them alone because they can't get in there but uh, you know just uh, the, the only exception is like uh, there um, that tree is touching the cage so they will come up to it and just eat the leaves off that not going to kill the tree though so I'm pretty happy with the way I decided to do those things I know I said in the last video this is four pears and eight apples and with the exception of those two the farthest away um, I don't have a tomato on those that's just because I didn't have that many tomatoes um, but then each one of these is a different variety of a indeterminate tomato that are vining up. I just staked these up uh, with the with the tying method last week, like I always do. So tree, tomato, and every one of these tomatoes, um, ten of them, has tomatoes on them. Every plant has a has some you know set of tomatoes on them. The best one, I guess I'll just I'm not going to go around to every one, but the best one probably is this one right here which I remember is some kind of a beefsteak tomato. And I see I already have to come out and uh, and uh, tie up, tie the next knot there. Um, some of them, this is, this is kind of a good example here. When I planted them, I didn't exactly think so far ahead that I was gonna stake it up the, uh, the T-post itself. I thought maybe I'd put another stake in, but this ground is so hard and gravelly and rocky, it's harder to do, so I kind of just coaxed it over there and now it's going to vine up and I think that'll work pretty well. Um, that's my garden, I'll go in there in a second. So 12 trees down there in the orchard, I put this fig up here just in hopes to get some protection for it um, in the winter. My other figs didn't do so well, they weren't protected like this though, up next to the house and I will do something um, to protect it even further, insulate it. I've seen people put like bubble wrap and then burlap around them um, because even though they say that figs will grow here and I, I did have that success at the other house that I got figs to grow they grew back from the ground every year so you don't didn't really have an established tree um, so it's it's sketchy whether you can have a fig tree or not in um, in this growing zone but I'll try to help that one along leaving the last video five of these six beds were already built this was the one that was not built so I got this one built and as luck would have it it's like the it's like the greenest one these are all my determinant tomatoes okay so the ones down in the orchard those are indeterminate we grow them like a vine these are my determinant tomatoes Roma um, Markovich or something like that and then some other uh, somewhat of a Spanish name that I won't even try to pronounce uh, four of each total of 12 tomatoes um, doing great all you do with these is not you don't trim them like like I do the other ones you don't cut the suckers but you just cut um, anything that's touching the ground like really here I should probably at least trim that leaf back but really I trim like that I just trim everything so that it's not touching the ground when they touch the ground, that's where they get their disease. When they touch the soil, I should say, not the ground. Um, and then in, in, interplanted in here is dill. That's a dill right there, that spiny thing. And there's another one there, and there's a third one over here. And I'll use dill if we get, uh, you know, pickles or uh, cucumbers at the right amount at the right time to uh, make refrigerator pickles. I've done that a couple times for a couple years. Um, but really the uh, meaning for the dill... I've read or seen on videos is that the dill will be like an early warning if you get tomato hornworm. The tomato hornworm evidently likes dill better than it likes tomatoes. So they're easy to spot on those little spindly plants. 
And then two other plants that are in here. These are cucumbers that are vining up. They look like they are ready to just burst out of here. I planted those more recently than these here. These don't look so good at all. I think they got crowded out by the squash. I overplanted this bed. As of now, I have exactly one cucumber growing on these. So at least you get one. There's my favorite kind of squash, Romanesco. I probably have eaten, we probably have eaten 10 of these already. And then there's another one about ready to pick. There's a couple of golden squash on there. Well, I guess one. Looks like the other one's got, is gonna rot and not, and not produce, but at least one that'll be ready in a couple of days. Anyway, back to this bed. Um, cucumbers are vining up here. They look like they're gonna give me some kind of mass production. So again, maybe I'll use those in the dill and the garlic that I have in the um, in the garage and maybe even the onions that I have planted over there and all that'll go into uh, my own pickling operation. Who knows? Um, the only other thing that's in here is carrots. There's a book called either Carrots Love Tomatoes or Tomatoes Love Carrots and I'm trying that out. They didn't, they didn't germinate so great so it's kind of hard to find them in here especially with all the tomato uh, debris in here but there's there are some carrots in there. You can see them farther back in there. There's a good, a better set. Did I almost say gooder? Of carrots back there. I think all in all, there's maybe like 25 carrots in here. Okay. I know I showed all this before, but real quick, these are two kinds of basil. I did get one parsley to come up right there. Okay. And then I just plugged in a tomato there because I had an extra. That's another determinant. Three cabbages. I had to go a couple of rounds with something called uh, BT, which is an organic spray to get the um, cabbage moth larva off of the cabbage and cauliflower and the other cabbage that's over there. And I don't remember if I showed that or not in the last video, but this is what they did to the kale. That's just all that's left is the ribs of the kale. They go after your brassicas. Lettuce is still doing okay under the shade cloth. Swiss chard can really be in full sun, but it's under the shade cloth right now. Three grapes, three blueberries that are going to get transplanted down there. I think the grapes will actually go against that retaining wall. The blueberries will probably go in um, that little planter bed there. And then I have three blackberries and three raspberries just biding their time in that bed right there that I think are going to go amongst the trees so maybe like three inside the first set of six that i have here and then three out in the far set really already showed this bed that's butternut squash over there not looking the best it's like this bed is just kind of wrapping up early gave me some food still got a spaghetti squash growing hoping i get at least one more there's two plants can i at least get two spaghetti squash um the romanescos they seem to kind of like give out three or four squash and then nothing for a week and then they put out some more so we're gonna pick that one they probably won't get any for a week green beans are almost ready to pick Ooh, something ate that <laughs> yeah, well we weren't i wasn't the first one to get to try my green beans this year but um yeah see th those actually are ready to pick right there we'll just wait until we have a few more that we actually maybe can get a serving uh the onions that i was talking about are there and a few others somewhere in there if I can get them to show up on camera. Cilantro went to seed around here. These are the cabbages that I'm talking about. That one got totally decimated by the cabbage moth. I don't know if we'll get anything out of that. Um, in fact, I can see more larva down in there. I think I tried to show this last time, but I didn't have a good example. That black mob in there is right there is the moth larva gross <laughs> so i might have to come out and spray again or maybe i just sacrifice this plant altogether and worry about the ones that are looking a little better that one looks pretty good that one looks pretty good cauliflowers that's these two right here i doubt it i don't think they're gonna make it feed the insects of the of the neighborhood um oh well, I, I was on this one and I jumped right over the watermelon. Sugar baby watermelon, got a good size one there. Let's put my hand next to it for reference. Yeah, so it's, I don't know, 
bigger than a softball, smaller than a volleyball. And then another one coming along there. And some tinier ones that are still forming. I've been asked several times, will these, will these hang on this thing? And the answer is, I don't know. We'll see. Spaghetti squash does. It did last year. So, all right, I think that's it. I mentioned the garlic in the garage, so we'll end with that. My, uh, this came from the last property. My, uh, the people who bought the house from us, just we decided to just split it 50-50, which was nice of them because they could have kept it for themselves. It's their property now. At the same time, I could have pulled it all early and took it with me, and then I would have just had small garlic and nothing to plant. So it was a nice compromise. They're very nice people. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching.